All right, so now that we know how muscles work, we're gonna go over a brief overview of many of the muscles of the body, um, skeletal muscles anyway. Um, and our skeletal muscles, that we have about uh, over 600 skeletal muscles in the human body. Each one is an organ uh, in and of itself, although we do often don't refer to them as, as organs um, in the sense that, you know, your stomach or your your liver, these other organs are. Um, at now the interesting thing about muscle is, uh, to a certain point after adulthood, um, muscle develops uh, much more easily um, and under less exercise than after about age 30. Much of this muscle is will be con will be replaced by fat if more exercise and more input isn't put into the system, which is why, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone do not have the same body types that they did back in their 20s and 30s. Um, and this continually gets, um, continues after, you know, as you age. Um, it also has to do with uh, decreasing testosterone um, in men. Uh, which also occurs after age 30. So we categorize muscles into four functional groups, so how they actually move. The first are prime movers, or which are also called agonists. So a biceps brachii is an example of this. It moves the forearm up and can move the whole arm up. Uh, an antagonist then opposes that agonist move. So it's not on here, but you would have the triceps brachii behind that in the triceps area, and that's gonna, uh, if a bicep pulls it up, pulls the arm up, the triceps will pull it down. Uh, you have synergists which work with the uh, prime movers, so the biceps brachii is the main mover in this system for lifting this cup. The brachioradialis assists in that movement, so it is a synergist, but it's not the main one. And then you have fixators which immobilize bone or muscle's origin. So there are a number of fixators on the scapula which help to keep the shoulder in place as you use your arm. Now each muscle has uh, three, um, three main factions to it. An origin, which is where it attaches and it stays fixed uh, during contraction. So that's the anchor part of it. An insertion, this is the part that it's going to move. So the um, the biceps attaches at the top of the shoulder, um, on the top of the humerus, and then its insertion would be on the forearm, and then the action, what it, what it does. You know, it uh, flexes the forearm, decreases, it causes flexion in that. So it would be a flexor. All right, so those are, I mean, those are the basics for these muscles. Now we're gonna just briefly go through a bunch of muscles. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on these muscles, just telling a little bit about them um, and going through them uh, regionally. Um, but to actually learn these muscles, it's gonna take more than just you know sitting and listening. So in class, we'll be doing a lot more hands-on um, exploring models and or different things <clears throat> um, all right but so we'll we'll just go through these kind of quickly so we'll start with the axial skeletal muscles on the face there are a lot of muscles on your face so they control a lot of things opening and closing your eyes uh, eyebrows you know a lot of this is important to facial um, uh, you know expression which we use for communication so we have the epicranius temporalis. Um, epicranius raises the eyebrows. Uh, the uh, temporalis elevates and retracts uh, the jaw. And um, it sits over the temporal uh, bone. So some of these are named after the bone, some of them are named after the action, uh, or where they are located on the body. Orbiculus, or orbicularis oculi and orbicularis oris. Uh, close the eye, close the lips, the masseter clenches the jaw, so just a big one on the side, you can't even see all these on this, so. Um, 
we will be using probably different figures in class to learn a lot of these. The mentalis is um, uh, important for pouting the lip. It's on your chin. The buccinator compresses the cheek, and the resorius is the kind of a laughing facial muscle. Uh, there are a lot of muscles in the neck as well. Your neck has a lot of movement in it, uh, but two of the main ones include the platysma, which tenses the skin of the neck, and the sternocleidomastoid. You can see that here. It's a big one, goes across behind the ear, um, and then onto the collarbone. Uh, you also have posterior muscles of the neck, the trapezius, which is a big muscle, goes all the way down to the middle of the back. Um, the splenius, which extends, uh, it's cut here, um, but you see it here, uh, extends and hyperextends the head, and this is an antagonist to the sternocleidomastoid. All right, so moving on to the torso, you have the pectoralis muscles across the chest, which are important for pushing, throwing, climbing, climbing and, and immobilizing the scapula. The serratus muscles, the internal and external costals and diaphragm are important for inhaling and exhaling on the ribs and below the ribs. Erectus abdominis on the uh, abdomen, transverse abdominis, external and internal obliques, all of those are important for your uh, abdominal uh, movements. Okay, so you see the pectoralis major uh, muscle there, the serratus muscles here. Um, the torso then, uh, we have the trapezius again, which we saw before, latissimus dorsi, big one, uh, is for arm extension. Iliocostalis longissimus and spinalis are along the spine. Uh, levator scapulae elevates and abducts the scapula. You have the supra and infraspinitis and teres major, all those attach to the scapula. Um, the rhomboid major from the scapula to the spine. Um, so in general, abdominal muscles are flexors and back muscles are extensors. So help you uh, flex and extend your, your muscles. So some of those got um, the latissimus dorsi, big one uh, across the side. Um, here are some of the scapula muscles, the infraspinitis, teres major, supraspinitis, and on the other side you would have the subscapularis. All right, on the appendicular skeletal muscles, so then looking on the appendages, uh, the levator scapulae is important for elevating the arm, uh, trapezius, again we already talked about that, elevation and depression and attraction of the arm, and those are assisted um, by the levator scapulae, pectoralis minor, and rhomboids. And the serratus again, plus the pectoralis minor helps for protraction. Um, where, and this is the only uh, action that the trapezius muscles are not involved in. All right, the upper arm, you have a, a big part of your um, shoulder muscle called the rotator cuff, which includes supraspinitis, infraspinitis, teres major, subscapularis. So those are all on the scapula. Um, the pectoralis major again, latissimus dorsi, again, important for moving, um, flexing and extending the arm. Deltoid is the big shoulder muscle, uh, prime mover of arm abduction away from the body. And there's no specific muscle that adducts the, the arm because gravity does most of it, but the pectoralis major and latissimus dorsi can assist if needed. So if you push against it, you can pull it down, but generally it's not needed. Uh, antagonist uh, muscles then are the biceps brachii and triceps brachii, uh, which are the flexor and extensor. We talked about those before, right? So here you have biceps. Um, on the other side, you have triceps. Again, you have all the muscles of the scapula um, and latissimus dorsi. Um, there are a lot of muscles in the forearm, uh, which we're not going to go over because they are very uh, abundant. And they have really long names. Okay, so we'll we'll skip over those, but we'll go over uh, these main muscles again in class. All right. All right, a couple of them though, a few in the lower arm, the ones with the smaller name uh, of the brachialis, which we talked about as the synergist or the brachioradialis. Both are synergists to the biceps. You also have some synergists to the triceps and the anconius. 
um, pronator teres, pronator quadratus, supernator, um, which is important for lateral rotation of the hand, moving it face up, palm up, and palm down. All right, now moving into our uh, hip and leg. In the hip, you have the iliopsoas, which is actually two muscles. I'll show you in a second. Um, and then the gluteal muscles surrounding you know, your uh, butt, or posterior part. Um, and there, you know, the gluteus maximus is the biggest and extensor muscle. Um, and these are synerg uh, gluteus medius is a synergist to that, and the gluteus minimus is for rotating. Okay, so again, you don't have the iliopsoas on here because that would actually just be a combination of these two mu muscles, the iliaceous and the psoas major. Um, uh, but then you can see all the other one, the gluteus maximus here is cut away, so you can see the gluteus medius and gluteus minimus. There are lots of other muscles found throughout here as well. There are three compartments for the legs, separated by fascia lata, which is a big, dense, connective tissue. And we'll go through these, the posterior, medial, and anterior part. The medial compartment contains the tensor fascia lata. Most of this muscle is fascia, is connective tissue, but it does have muscle within it and it abducts the hip. The adductor mangus, magnus excuse me, um, adducts the hip in the opposite direction, so it would be an antagonist to the tensor fascia lata. This is the groin muscle which often gets pulled. The adductor uh, longus is an antagonist as well to the tensor fascia lata. And you have adductor brevis, pectineus, and gracilis, which are weak adductor and knee flexors. Okay, um, and you can't see the tensor fascia lata on here. It looks like it's been um, cut back so you can see all the internal muscles. Oh wait, here it is. Tensor fascia lata. Um, all right, in the posterior compartment, you have semimembranosus, tendinosus, and biceps femoris, which are extensors of the thigh and flexors of the knee. These are all right next to each other. Biceps femoris is a big one. Uh, then you have the quadriceps muscles, which quad refers to four muscles that are all next to each other, the vastus lateralis, intermedius, medialis, and the rectus femoris. All of these are flexors and hip extensors, flexors of the hip and extensors of the knee. The sartorius is the longest muscle in the body, um, and it flexes and abducts and laterally rotates the thigh and flexes the knee. Okay, so it also helps you in the cross-legged uh, position. So here's the sartorius goes from uh, the crest of the ilium, so the top of the hip, all the way down and around the other side of the knee. And so when you are sitting um, Indian style, uh, you can you can feel that all the way across. But here we are. Then we've got the vastus lateralis medialis rectus femoris. Intermedius would be under that. Um, and some of the other muscles we just mentioned are on some of the other figures. All right. Um, lastly, just wanted to point out uh, some of the antagonistic muscles. We have the sternocleidomastoid and the splenius, then for sp spinitis and teres major and the slip scapularis. They are generally on opposite sides of each other. Biceps, brachii, triceps, the tensor fascia lata, and the adductor muscles, uh, the hamstrings, and the quadriceps. And that's it for our brief survey through the muscles.